Hello and welcome to another instalment of Mantis Hacks. If you've been following this series, you'll know I've been building a giant hydraulic gripper to go on the front of the Mantis. If you don't know what the Mantis is, check out the links. So what are we going to cover in this instalment? Um, well, I'm going to do a quick recap of what we've done before, which is the open loop control using the Arduino uh, of the gripper. And um, I've put a slightly different potentiometer on here. It's like a spring return joystick. Uh, so I need to do a little bit more signal conditioning on that, which we'll go into in a minute. Uh, and then we'll move on to the closed loop control, which would should give us position control using the joystick. Um, so let's take a look at the signal conditioning first. All right, I have my uh, code running here, and I'm just displaying the output of the potentiometer, uh, the DAC output, and how many milliamps that equates to. Uh, and in currently in my code, uh, the swing in milliamps should be uh, so a thousand microamps, so one milliamp either side of twelve milliamps, and that's my output swing to the DAC. Um, so if I move my potentiometer, here it is, um, we can see that the potentiometer input is now moving from five, no, 460 to about 630. And actually I'm getting a swing of about 12.26 milliamps to about 11.89 milliamps with a center position of about 12.08 milliamps. So we need to adjust that swing range. Um, and that's done by the maths function interpolate over here um, and that is called within the DAC update routine. So if we have a look in this routine um, we're originally uh, interpolating between the full input range of the analog to digital converter which was uh, 10 bit so that's 0 to 1023. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've created these two definitions up here and I'm just going to put those in place of the current ADC range and then set that minimum and maximum. So let's just have another look. So we've got about 630 in the maximum position and about 460 in the minimum position. Okay, let's just feed that back to the board and see what we get. And this is only two point interpolation at the moment. So the center position might be off because it might not be a very linear pot. Um, but you can do three-point interpolation to get that center bang on. Uh, so we're now getting about 12 milliamps of output in the in the middle position. And if I take it to one end, yep, we're getting 13 milliamps, and the other end we're getting 11 milliamps. So that has scaled that really nicely now. Um, but we will notice there's a bit more jitter in the data, and that's because we're scaling a much smaller range on the potentiometer. So we're actually picking up more noise, and we're amplifying that noise. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to turn off the uh, DAC output um, debug info and then I'm going to send that back down to the Arduino and look at it on the, on the serial plotter so we can see the actual output signal from the potentiometer. So you can see there's a lot of noise on there. I'm just going to swing that back and forward. So there we go. And you can see it's quite a noisy signal. So what I'm going to do is add a first order filter to that to clean that signal up a bit. Um, because right now I can do some pretty crazy stuff with it and it is picking up quite a lot of noise. So let's see what the first order filter does. I've just added uh, a variable here, filtered pot input, and there's our normal pot input. And down in the main loop, we can see the pot input being read there. And then the filtered on pot input is the output of this function, first order filter, and it takes values of pot input, filtered pot input, and a value of 5. And let's just have a look what that does. So let's look in the maths functions. So the first order filter has an input value, a current value, and a filter value. And then it has a new value derived from this filter. And that is that it takes the input value, it adds the current value multiplied by the filter, and then divides that by the filter plus one. Uh, and it's a really nice filter, a first order filter. It just takes out some of that noise and it smooths the ed edges of everything. And it's something I use a lot within animatronics and control systems in general. Um, so let's put this into the, uh, I think I've already got the debug here. I've added some, a line in here to debug the filtered output of the pot. And my current filter value, like I said, is just set at five. So let's send that down to the Arduino and see what it does. 
So already you can see there's a slight uh, offset there, and the uh, but the blue data, which is really noisy, uh, and then this is our, the red data is our filtered output. So let's just move the potter around a bit. There you go, and you should be able to see how much smoother the output is. There is a slight delay, but that's part of the effect of the filter. But there's a really nice smooth output to it now and a lot less noise when it's in its uh, normal position. And then there are some uh, things to note on this filter. I've only done it to int 16 um, range at the moment, so you do have to be careful um, because obviously this is a multiplication happening in here. And if I multiply uh, the um, current value by a filter that makes it overflow, then obviously that's going to cause problems. So at the moment, with the current value um, being up to 1023, if we're using our full range of um, uh, our ADC, we can only have a filter value of around 30 maximum. Um, but you could change this all to 32-bit um, or even floating point. Um, so we can play around a little bit here. Let's just take this filter value up to 15. And uh, I'll send that back down and just show you the difference on that. Sometimes I just use very small filters to get rid of the noise and other times I'll do it to, to smooth things out and particularly in animatronics to make things much more organic looking. So here we go, here's a filter of 15. So you can see now it's got a nice smooth end spot. It's got quite a fast response time and then a smooth, as, uh, smooth out as it hits its uh, destination. So now that filter's in place, the only thing I needed to do was just check the swing of the potentiometer again, because we're in integer precision, the filter does have an effect on the output values. Um, so I'm getting a range of about 628 to about 458. So I fed those back into my control pot minimum and maximum, so that I get a nice swing of, on my output of 13 milliamps to 11 milliamps. Uh, and now that's in place, we can uh, check out how it works on the gripper again. That's pretty good so we're getting the full range of travel now and that was still only plus or minus one milliamp on the valve so it's one eighth of its um, full flow capacity uh, but it's pretty good and um, there's still drift in the middle um, where I haven't tuned out that center position on the valve so I need to uh, add an offset to the valve output to stop it from drifting um, but otherwise it's working really nicely so I think it's probably time to move on to adding the closed loop PID algorithm into here Hang on, so before I go any further, I've got to attach the encoder to our gripper so we have feedback. And while the gripper is still in open loop control mode, I can move the gripper and monitor the limits, the extent of the encoder movement, so I can feed them into my PID loop. So that's what I should do next. Okay, so to add my encoder, I've got my little bellows couplings. And first of all, that uh, goes in place on top of that joint there. Then I've got my encoder with the other half of the coupling on it, already on the top of the encoder here, with the two pins which will meet up with uh, this part of the coupling, like that. Okay, and then that gives you a bit of uh, mis uh, axis misalignment there. So I'm going to put this on, and then the encoder goes through that plate, through the hole, a little bit tight, and then line those two pins up. And then what I'm going to do is use these clamps, these little aluminium clamps. Uh, these are off of the Mantis, it's the same system on the Mantis. Uh, and then basically the clamp uh, goes on the edge of the encoder there, and then the bolt goes through the plate and the clamp, uh, which means you can basically move the encoder around to get the position correct and then tighten the clamps up. Um, now these uh, the holes in the plate should be tapped to M4, and this should be an M4 bolt. Uh, but I don't have my M4 tap here, so I'm just going to put M3 uh, bolts through and put a nut on the back for now and then tighten it all up, uh, which will be fine for the purpose of this initial test. Um, so the encoder has a range of 0 to 32767, so I, I guess I want it somewhere about 16,000 when the grippers are closed. Uh, but I also want to be able to get to this grub screw here so I can tighten everything up. 
so I'll find a good compromise and I also need to take into account where I want the cable exit to be. Um, I don't really want the cable facing forward so I want it facing back, something like that. Um, so let's try and find a good position. So right now I'm at the end of the encoder code of travel so that's a really bad position to be in. Uh, so let's rotate this round um, and let's go, keep going. So there's 16,000. So that should be about, the encoder should be about halfway in its travel right now. And I can get to the grub screw easily enough on this side. So I'm just going to tighten that grub up. And hopefully that would have locked the encoder to the shaft. And now all I need to do is just tweak these up. And that's going to clamp the encoder to the plate. So that's nice and rigid now, and that's not moving anywhere. So now I've got the encoder in place, I'm just going to fire up in open loop control mode and drive the gripper from one end to the other and take a note of the encoder range so I can use that within my PID controller. So here we go. So at this end I'm getting the encoder reading of 16,413. So I'm just going to feed that in, and then let's open it up, and here I've got a reading of 20,657. Okay, so that's the two ends of my limit set from the encoder, uh, so now I can use that to feed it into the PID controller. Okay, so I've downloaded the PID library from the Arduino website um, and I'm going to use this to start with, but eventually I might write my own PID controller uh, so that I can do things like add force control as well as position control on the gripper by adding some sensors to the hydraulic ram. Uh, but for now this will do to get us started. Um, so let's just take a look. Uh, I've added the PID controller into my sketch. Uh, I've got my encoder minimum and maximum, which I monitored a minute ago from moving the gripper. I've got my control potentiometer minimum and maximum. And if I carry on down the sketch here, I've got my PID uh, controller set up. So we have to pass in some pointers to some variables here, which is effectively the feedback point, the desired set point, and the drive, what is the output from the controller. Uh, and then I've got some basic PID terms set up, so I've got just proportional gain of 1, no integral gain and no derivative gain, and it's direct control. Um, so basically if the gripper moves in the wrong direction when I start, I'll probably have to invert this uh, output here. So now in the uh, setup here, I've got some more uh, configuration of the PID controller. Uh, I've got the output limit set to minus 1,000 and plus 1,000. This is fairly arbitrary because I'm actually doing my own scaling uh, for the output on the valve. And I've got my sample time set at 10 milliseconds, so it'll run at 100 hertz. And the tuning parameters are uh, reiterated again here, PID of 100. Uh, the controller direction and the controller automatic. And I think this just uh, enables the controller when it powers up. Uh, so let's go and have a look at the loop. Uh, so I've added a PID compute section down here and I'm just copying the gripper position into my encoder feedback position, that's my double position variable. And the desired set point I'm effectively interpolating my filtered potentiometer input between its minimum and maximum range and interpolating that up to the encoder minimum and maximum range in fact, you should probably see that happening down here. So here's my set point, and here's my actual point from the encoder. If I move the set point, it should go between about 16,400 and something to 20,600 and something. And that's roughly my encoder range. Uh, and now, the, the computes, the, after that, there's the PID compute routine, which is effectively uh, working out the, uh, the output um, the, of the valve, how much drive to give the valve. And right now you can see it's in full drive in one direction, and that's because the uh, potentiometer is in the middle position, so it wants to open the grippers up, and the, and the grippers are currently shut. Uh, so it's given a maximum drive in one direction. 
uh, and if I move the, uh, in the potentiometer towards the closed position, the drive drops off because the error gets between the set point and the actual point becomes less. Uh, so in a minute we'll find out if that is actually driving the grippers in the right direction. It might uh, be need inverting, so I might have to change that configuration of the uh, PID controller. Uh, but otherwise I'm just outputting these values to the screen just so we can see them for now for debug purposes, but uh, uh, let's fire it up and see what happens. Basically when we fire this up, it's either going to go one of two ways. Either the gripper will try and move into the position of the potentiometer, which uh, it should be sort of halfway open, because I think this should be shut and this should be open. Uh, so it's in the halfway position because of the spring return. Uh, or it will just stay where it is because we've got the polarity the wrong way around and uh, it needs inverting, so it's actually trying to close more than is possible. Uh, but all we can do really now is fire it up and give it a go. I mean, really, I probably should fire it up on uh, a low pressure to start with, or if it was a big system, I would definitely do that. So turn the valve on first, uh, and then followed by the pump, uh, and hope for the best. Well. I think that it's, I've got the drive around the right way straight away because it's sprung into position, which I think is this position here, so let's find out. Yeah. Pretty lucky. So it's now just tracking the position of the potentiometer. So we've got the drive the right way around straight away, which is pretty pretty lucky. 50-50 chance. So that was pretty good. Uh, I guess the only what we can do now is um, I can open up the valve a bit and give it a bit more flow and also tune up the uh, PID parameters so take the P gain up a little bit higher and maybe have a look on the screen at the actual position and the uh, required position or the desired position and see what the tracking error is and just try and tune it up really nice. So one interesting thing about trying to tune a PID loop on this kind of system is that I've got a linear actuator and the feedback is on a rotary joint and the relationship between the two is non-linear um, so in an ideal world I'd have the feedback on the linear actuator um, but I don't have that so the way around that is that uh, and the problem that it causes is that when the gripper is open uh, a small amount of movement on the linear actuator causes a much larger movement on the rotary feedback and when it's closed, uh, a bigger, a larger movement causes less movement on the rotary feedback. And, and so really, when you're tuning the loop, you should tune it with the gripper in the open position, because that's where it's going to get the most violent or the most error on, on the feedback position. And I can demonstrate that by upping the gain on the PID controller to a, a level of 2. So I'm going to put a proportional gain of 2 in there and it should probably start to oscillate but it'll oscillate more violently in the open position than it will in the closed position let's just have a look at that okay so as i bring the grips together the oscillation is slightly less and is almost controllable but as i get them apart into a really bad state. So that's kind of a good demonstration of uh, that issue. Um, like I said, the way around it is to tune it with the grippers in the open position and just settle for the fact that the following error when they're closed is going to be slightly worse. So I've got this tuned up pretty nicely now. Um, I did reduce the proportional gain a bit. It's down about 0.75 now. And I did add some integral gain into the, into the system to uh, help hold its steady state position. Uh, so I can fire that up and show you that quickly, how that's moving. So it's really nice and responsive now on the joystick. I feel there's some pretty good precision there as well. And the precision of the system will only get better with uh, a better analog to digital converter because right now we're only using the 10-bit converter and a very small range of the potentiometer. Well, what's next for this project? Uh, well, I need to add feedback to the other actuators 
uh, and close the loop on them so I can see that nice rotary actuator working and also the pitch axis uh, and then assemble the whole thing together find something big enough to bolt it down to and try and get it all under control uh, maybe on joysticks like this uh, so until then please uh, subscribe to the channel and visit the Facebook page uh, which is www.facebook.com forward slash mantis robot I think that pretty much wraps it up the only thing left to do is to use that to open this Oh, look at that lovely precision control. <laughs> Boring! <laughs> yeah. Totally worth it.